Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing how to develop your psychic abilities. So for everyone it's completely different and if any of these tips work, that would be absolutely amazing. These are just tips that have helped me develop my psychic abilities and to help do tarot, do anything that's kind of clairvoyant, you know, giving messages from the divine, you know, whatever we call them up there, <laughs> uh, spirits. So basically, we're just gonna be talking about the different types of developing your psychic abilities, what sort of psychic abilities there are. And we're gonna talk about sort of things that you can do if you've possibly lost your psychic abilities, which bear in mind, you cannot lose your psychic abilities. You may just kind of have been dormant for a while, or if you are looking to just completely bring up your psychic abilities if you have never kind of used them before, okay? So first of all, I'm gonna just give you the down low. <laughs> is that I haven't always been this open about my psychic abilities, okay? I have been psychic my whole life, but it was never really called psychic abilities. For me, I always thought it was basically, I'm an empath, which means I'm very empathic for people with emotions. So I can basically feel someone's emotions without physically having them myself. Let's say someone was having a depressive state and they were feeling very sad, they were feeling very uncomfortable and I had never been through depression. Um, I have been through that, but let's say I haven't. And I can actually still feel their energy. And it's almost like a scale of kind of like, there's different ways of the, the energy that you can feel from somebody and you can actually feel their emotions, you know? So I have been, uh, there's, there's various amounts of different words that you can call it. You can call yourself an empath. You can call yourself a starseed. You can call yourself a highly sensitive person. You know, the list goes on, okay? So you can basically call yourself whatever you wanna call yourself, whatever kind of suits you. If you don't know what you are, you can always Google it. You can always kind of see what sort of person you are. For me, I actually discovered the word highly sensitive person from YouTube. There was this video that did 10 different ways that show you're a highly sensitive person or something like that. I'll link it down below, it's very, very helpful. And pretty much all of them resonated with me. It's like you have to exercise on your own. You don't like exercising with other people. You like your own space. You are very sensitive to other people's energies. So being out in public can be very, very overwhelming sometimes. So that is why, okay? So being a highly sensitive person, if you clicked on this video, most likely you are a highly sensitive person or an empath or both because people who want to develop their psychic abilities are the ones who are the most sensitive. They can feel other people's feelings. They can sense other people's energies. And I'm not saying that every single time you meet someone, it's gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna be like your best friend forever or you're gonna be my boyfriend. Or sometimes it can be a bit confusing because sometimes people's energies don't actually match up with their human body and how they're actually interacting. I have had this personally in my life where I have basically thought that somebody is gonna be a really good person in my life and they turn out to be a really horrible person, okay? So basically it can be quite confusing, especially when you are highly sensitive from a very young age because you think that that's, I mean, obviously it is normal, but you think other people can sense it as well. You, you think other people are highly sensitive as well and you're like, oh, okay, I'll just be myself. But some people just really don't vibe with that energy. Some people are very um, asleep. Some people I call them muggles. I don't mean to be mean when I say that, but I just find it very funny because I call them muggles because it's almost like a very easy way of distincting people who are woke and who aren't awoke. So let's get started. Um, I actually don't know where this video is going, so I hope it actually has some sort of relevance to you and it helps you. So the different uh, types of kind of clairvoyancy, um, the different clairs, there are six different ones. I actually realized this only a few months ago that there's six. I didn't know there was this many. I think there's five, five or six, there's quite a few. The first one is clairvoyance, which is seeing. Most people have this, you see in pictures, you see in, I see in metaphors, pictures. Um, I get a type of energy, like a vibe. Um, that's, people can see clairvoyance as different ways. Sometimes people see it as like seeing physical things in the middle of like their face, like actually in front of them. But for me, I see it in my mind, almost like imagination. It's like if I was to say, imagine an elephant, and now you've got an elephant in your mind. So that's basically how it works, is there is an image in your mind. And it's basically, it feels like imagination, but it isn't, it is literally your clairvoyance coming through. So the next one is clairaudience, which is clear hearing. You can hear voices, People some, sometimes people hear, um, I don't know, sometimes I hear like a train going, um, a kettle whistling, that sort of thing. It's normally noises that you actually know, 
and you already know the sound of. You especially know if it's clairaudient because it's actually a sound that you have no idea what it is. <laughs> and you're like, I'm confused. <laughs> so it can be things you already know the sound of. It can be things that you don't know the sound of. It can be someone talking like a ancestor talking to you, you know. But if you don't have all of these, don't, don't be hard on yourself, okay? Some people have some of these, some people have all of them, you know. It depends okay so then we have clairsentient which is clear feeling this is one of my faves because I love feeling into energies I love feeling it's almost like you get like a warm sense it's, it's basically like different emotional levels so to say if you were going to um, tune into somebody and you want to know say if they have been through um, emotional trauma or have they been through something that's quite deep if you pick up on something that's quite heavy and almost feels like possibly like a blanket's coming over you or you feel it's like you feel very constricted that can be certain levels of that feeling so constricted could feel like you feel claustrophobic or having like a feeling like you've got a blanket over your head feels like you feel compressed so you feel quite depressed or sad anxious you know there's various different ways whatever is good for you that's what you're going to feel maybe my examples aren't resonating with you and that's totally fine it's whatever is resonating with you is what's going to be the most best for you okay so basically just feeling into what you feel is most accurate so the next one is clear cognizance which is clear knowing okay so this is basically all about that you knowing something to be true you know something's going to happen i do feel like i'm more of the other ones i have just said um also the clear alliance which is clear smelling so there is various different ones i do feel like i'm pretty much all of them my main one that i have is mainly uh clairvoyance and clairsentience it's clear feeling and clear seeing because I just kind of get a massive sense of emotions. I'm also a water sign, like triple. <laughs> I have a uh, Scorpio, Sun, Cancer, Moon, and I'm also Scorpio, Mercury. I do also have, I think, a couple of other water signs in my chart. So if you are a water sign, then this is also gonna help you to develop your psychic abilities. Water signs are naturally, uh, are naturally psychic. So they are naturally very, very highly sensitive. Obviously, if you don't have a lot of water in your chart or anything like that, don't worry. It's just mainly it does help when, when it comes to actually feeling into things, okay? The first thing I wanna tell you guys to develop your psychic abilities is to meditate, okay? Meditation is <laughs> a variety of things, okay? You do whatever you feel is necessary. For me, I had a very short attention span. I thought, nope, don't I don't wanna meditate. Don't make me meditate. My mum is a very good meditator. She's been meditating for many, 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 many years. And she's always like, oh, maybe you should meditate. And I'm like, ew, no, go away. Being my stubborn Scorpio self, being my fixed sign self. But basically the best way for you to do it is to figure out a meditation that will really suit you. First of all, I started with a candle and I sat cross-legged on my floor. Best way I think is to sit on the floor because you're more grounded. Obviously you do what's best for you. I sat on the floor cross-legged and I had a candle in front of me and I just played some music for one minute and that's it. And then I started on one minute and then I went up to five minutes and sometimes I do 10 minutes, but five minutes to 10 minutes is actually all I need because I have a very concentrated brain. <laughs> um, so if I can, I can suck up energy very, very quickly. So for meditating, I can only, I can only do like 10 minutes of meditation. I can do 20 minutes, but for me, what's best is five to 10 minutes. So that might be best for you. You do whatever is best for you, but meditation is gonna really help you, okay guys? I've always been, as I say, highly sensitive. I am I do feel like I'm generally psychic. I've never really lost it. For anything, it's advanced because I've been through so many different stages in my life. I've been through different traumas, things like that. And also it's it's basically what's gonna, meditation is gonna help you too, is you have basically, I feel like two levels. You have like the um, messy kind of, let's say there's clouds, okay? There's clouds and you can't see what's kind of going on. And when the clouds clear, you can see like the bright blue sky and things like that. And that's basically like your mind. And that's how um, the app Headspace basically said it to be, you know, that's how they basically describe it. I started using Headspace before it didn't really work for me because guided meditations, I don't really fancy a lot of the time. It makes my head even more confused. So I just use uh, music, but you have guided meditations, you can do grounding meditations, breathing exercises, you know, whatever suits you. As long as you're in the vibe of kind of acknowledging your thoughts and letting them flow, that's just meditation in itself, okay? And you're relaxed, obviously. If you're not relaxed, what's the point? <laughs> it's definitely not meditation if you're not relaxed the best thing for you to do is to carry on meditating that's just one that's like the massive big thing that really helped me because what you need to do is there's as i said there's two levels one level is basically just the mess that goes on in your brain like overthinking what we're going to do tomorrow what we're going to wear blah 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 and then you've got to kind of lift up out of that and you've got to separate those like the monkey mind almost the human mind to the spiritual 
part of you, okay? So we all have these psychic abilities, all of us, because we're all spiritual beings in a human body, you know? So what you need to do is you need to just keep meditating as much as you possibly can because you need to get that space and it will open your heart and it will open your third eye. And I remember when it was about six months into meditating, I don't meditate every single day, just to let you know, you do it when you, when you feel like it. After about six months, I was sitting and I was doing my normal meditation and my heart just opened fully and I was like, whoa, what the hell? And it almost feels like you have a lot of like breath in your lungs. Yeah, it feels like I had more breath and I was like, oh my God, wow, this feels amazing. It, feel, it felt so scary because I was like, what is this? I don't understand what this is going on. I'm so confused but it felt like amazing. It felt like, wow, freedom. It felt like happiness. It felt like peace. It just felt so good. And that's when I thought, okay, now I'm ready to start doing more kind of spiritual things. I feel like whether that's like incense in myself or, you know, buying crystals, you know, I've always bought crystals and things like that, but I've never was fully down for doing that just because I didn't have the space for it. I was at school, I was at university, I didn't have time, I didn't have the headspace, you know, I wasn't fully myself. The second one is to practice tarot and to use crystals. You can do this at the same time or separately. When I first bought my tarot deck, um, I bought the Rider Waite Tarot. I didn't really like this deck at first because I thought, oh, it's a bit boring, but actually it's so good, okay, because it has the original artwork of the original tarot i'm pretty sure this is the original tarot and people use it on youtube a lot of tarot readers use it and it will help you to understand what each card means and then once you know what each card means i really do feel like it's up to your interpretation as to how you want to bring it across obviously you don't have to go by the actual strong meanings i just got a massive ring in my ear thank you very much <laughs> Um, just let you know, if you get a ring in your ear, it means that your uh, ancestors are with you. So I just got a ring in my ear. So someone's around here right now because I'm picking up a tarot deck and they're like, oh, messages. <laughs> um, so basically you can get different versions of tarot. You don't have to get the right away tarot deck. But for me personally, I like, because of my Virgo rising self, I like things to be in nice little ordered boxes. So if I knew exactly what every single card meant, I'm like, okay, now I know what it means. Now I can have my own interpretation on it. You don't actually have to go off of exactly what the tarot means. That's not like obviously what it's for. Say like you get the, like the sun card and it means obviously happiness, it means expansion, it means something good coming. You can see this as the death card, you know, it just depends. It's what whatever you feel like is best for you. Obviously I read tarot as it is, but it's completely up to you. That's the amazing thing about doing this stuff is you can you can do your own thing with it. Also of crystals, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting yourself some selenite or I will leave a little list of crystals down below for that are really, really good for developing your psychic abilities because selenite is so, so good at connecting with ancestors, connecting with the spirit realm. It will really, really help you. I always have this in my readings. If you have watched any of my picker cards, you'll see that this guy is in my picker cards. And also to have something that is definitely like a raw crystal, okay? Rose quartz is also very good because it helps you to open your heart and therefore it will help you to see clearer as well. Because if you have a blocked heart, you've gone through trauma, breakups, things like that, it is gonna be harder for you to open your psychic abilities because you're so closed off that you won't allow any sort of new energies to come through. And obviously don't be hard on yourself if you've gone through a lot of trauma, you know, sometimes it, it comes through more when you've worked on that, when you've done possibly therapy or when you've done journaling. Sometimes it just takes time, guys, so don't be too hard on yourself if things don't happen the exact way you want it in terms of your psychic abilities, and there's no rush, basically, okay? As I said, I have always been intuitive. I just definitely think it's because I'm a water sign. It definitely helps, um, but I definitely think that's just my soul's purpose is just to be highly, highly sensitive, which was annoying because no one ever really accepted me for who I was, <laughs> and I was like, okay, why am I so weird and different? But, you know, now we're here on my Crystal Guy channel talking about psychic abilities okay so the next thing to do is to work by yourself and to also get yourself some space um, cut out negative people who don't serve you um, to basically what you what you're doing is you're clearing clearing your space around you so you can think okay you don't want annoying family members around you you don't want um, toxic people obviously if you can't help it you just need to make sure you're getting your own space which is meditating going for a walk in nature you know get that space by yourself so you can actually hear your thoughts because you want to actually get into your mind and and look at those thoughts and think okay what's actually going on let me release those instead of distraction 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 you know 
distraction is going to cause your psychic abilities to almost be pushed under the rug because it's not actually letting yourself be free and flowing okay so what's also really good as i said is to feel into things feel into your emotions feel into um, possibly other people you can also practice on animals uh, for me i felt it was really helpful to i mean my main one is to practice tarot and meditation those two are like the main ones that really really develop my psychic abilities um the another one i have heard is to possibly like link in with animals if you have a pet then try to kind of figure out what sort of their feelings anything like that it is harder to do it with your own pets your own family members yourself it is harder because you have your ego in the way you obviously know what they're like naturally you know how they work you know the personality you know things like that so i would highly highly recommend if you do want to practice tarot to actually um do readings for other people who you don't really know and that would help you i for, i first of all started doing readings for family and friends i and that's basically how i started and that and if it resonated with them then i know that that would be right okay guys so also don't be too hard on yourself if you like don't be too hard on yourself when you do readings okay if you're not going to do readings this won't resonate resonate to you so don't worry about it but if you do want to do readings or you do just want to do tarot and when you want to possibly help people things like that don't be too hard on yourself if things don't resonate and don't be too kind of focused on the overall message so basically if you feel like a message is coming in you're thinking it's not going to resonate it's not going to resonate it's not going to resonate don't worry about it just tell the person what it is obviously don't be too mean about it <laughs> like you suck <laughs> I don't know. um basically that was one of my things is i thought this isn't going to resonate this isn't going to make any sense and then when it did i was like okay this is another level <laughs> you know so it's just amazing so the last thing i want to tell you guys is to eat good food um to avoid fast food avoid alcohol avoid smoking avoid drugs that sort of thing obviously i'm not talking about medical drugs like antibiotics and stuff um or your drugs that you need on the daily that's totally fine i'm talking about things that you you don't really need to have like on a health basis you know um if things like alcohol if you can reduce that that will really help for me i can actually do readings when i have had like a glass of wine or something you know and i can do it if i've had like mcdonald's or something like that but as i say i'm just naturally like psychic i'm naturally sensitive which is actually annoying guys okay let me just <laughs> sometimes it's very annoying which is why i wear my hematite all the time the hematite is also very good for making you grounded that's what i was going to say as well crystals selenite rose quartz like a raw crystal is very very good and also um when you are channeling it's very good to keep grounded you don't want to get too far into the energies because sometimes you can just float off and just oh this this feels nice i'm not going to come home you know <laughs> um, obviously you don't need to, i don't want to scare you guys it's not going to happen you're not going to actually float off but sometimes it's almost like when you start daydreaming and you're just kind of in that moment and it takes you a while to just come back and you're like oh okay um it's that sort of thing so what i'd really recommend is getting a hematite um is getting possibly jet uh tourmaline black onyx anything like that would really kind of bring you into your body um i actually have trouble with this this is overthinking is just a really big thing for me so i always wear my hematite very very good especially in public spaces as well it helps you to stay grounded also um on the topic of jewelry i really highly recommend actually wearing crystals because it's it, when you it's close to your body you feel connected to it and you also don't think about it um sometimes i highly highly recommend this because i know a lot of people carry crystals around with them and sometimes they can get lost sometimes they can fall off sometimes you you'll never find them again you know things like that so i always wear things that are very convenient for me obviously you do what's best for you but i also highly recommend wearing like selenite around your neck this is like a, a selenite necklace and i basically put it around my neck and it kind of sits like here and it's, it just feels really good sometimes if i'm feeling like i can't really if i feel like i can't really connect with um spirits or i'm feeling a little bit blocked this is also really really good clear quartz any white crystals very good for um connecting with spirit so you get white crystals and light crystals that are very good for connecting with spirit and black crystals that are very good with keeping you grounded okay so obviously all the white crystals are up here and all the black crystals are down in the earth okay so basically that's how you connect with those two different parts of you okay so that is the video i really hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please let me know in the comments i have been wanting to do a video like this for a very long time i've also been kind of scared about doing it but i hope it really resonates with you guys i love you so much and i'll speak to you very soon much love bye